Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Bio with Binod. Today in this video, we are going to see three important things. The first one is, we are going to discuss on the photomicrograph of an animal tissue. And you know, we already learned, uh, you know, about blood and we will be dealing with blood. The second thing is, we are going to learn by taking a past paper question. Um, what is blood clotting and the mechanism of blood clotting? And the last, we will be dealing with um, how this uh, food and oxygen, they move out of the capillaries and, uh, you know, uh, how uh, from the tissue fluid, how it is exchanged, okay, between the cells and how the waste are carried. So, we will be dealing with these three uh, important things in the syllabus, okay. So, first we will start with the photomicrograph of blood, right. So, already we learned in the last video that Blood is a fluid connective tissue and photomicrograph like this you can see in questions especially in paper 6 okay they will give a question uh, you know like this okay the below figure shows the photomicrograph of an animal tissue photomicrograph is a photograph of a microscopic object okay taken with the help of a microscope so here you can see uh, this is a blood smear slide okay showing the blood cells okay which is magnified okay roughly given okay times 1600 okay it is magnified so here on the board you can see the photomicrograph of an animal tissue usually the question will be first question will be name the tissue okay so ah uh, sometimes students they get doubt right the doubt is uh, what type of tissue is this so remember that this is blood already we learned blood is a fluid connective tissue so this tissue name the tissue the first question so you can write blood why because it's made up of many many cells okay right then identify the cells that is the next question identify all the cells which is present in this photomicrograph okay so here let us see okay one by one first you can see plenty of red color okay uh, biconcave disc like cells we already learned they are all rbc so we have to label rbc red blood cells okay then uh, you can label, here you can see all the cells with the nucleus, okay, with the nucleus. You can see one, two, three, four cells here in this photomicrograph, okay. So four cells, they are WBC, okay. So this is, you know, you can see lobed nucleus here, okay. So they are uh, neutrophils and they are WBC. So you can write WBC. Uh, or neutrophil neutrophil okay right so this this one also green color you can see that also WBC okay and this WBC it is called as lymphocyte okay lymphocyte right WBC or lymphocyte okay then here you can see another WBC here with uh, you know a kidney shaped nucleus and this WBC uh, you can label WBC or uh, that is monocyte so we have labeled most of the cells still you can see uh, some fragments like you can see pieces like 
they are the blood platelets okay blood platelets right and then see the empty part here nothing is there empty spaces okay that is the plasma right so now we label okay uh, this photomicrograph of blood right all the important cells right so all cells with the nucleus they are wbc very easy to identify all the cells with nucleus and the red one which you can see plenty okay they are all rbc they don't have nucleus okay right they are biconcave disc like cells okay you can see right now next question is how to draw and label these cells okay how to draw and label so first of all sometimes they will ask you know to draw this rbc big and label it so i am taking okay this rbc okay i am drawing it big here okay yes just to draw like that okay then you label rbc how to label just to label ah uh, cell membrane okay inside cytoplasm okay all drawing and labeling by using pencil okay don't put uh, you know pointed lines okay just the line that is enough okay so cell membrane cytoplasm okay don't draw one more circle even though sometimes you see like that because if you draw uh, it looks like nucleus and uh, this is rbc okay rbc drawing rbc big right then next one is we will see how to draw uh, a neutrophil or a wbc okay so wbc we will draw um so we will draw here okay we will draw here um wbc okay that is this new tropin okay right then you can see lobed nucleus okay right lobed nucleus just to see the picture and just draw it okay look at the picture and draw it like that okay no shading okay no shading just draw it clear okay and you can see many granules in the cytoplasm that you can just represent the granules okay but remember no shading so that this picture how to label you know okay labeling see that is cell membrane okay cytoplasm okay ah uh, granules granules g okay then lobed nucleus in this nucleus you can see three lobes so here also three okay ah uh, lobed nucleus lobed nucleus you have to write in full sentence okay right i mean ah uh, not short forms okay lobed nucleus granules cytoplasm cell membrane see how to draw and label it so a wbc i showed how to draw and label sometimes they will ask you know uh, to draw lymphocyte so you have to draw like that in lymphocyte you see the cytoplasm is very very less okay ah uh, that is cell membrane little cytoplasm big nucleus okay if it is a uh, lymphocyte okay if it is neutrophil you can see lobed nucleus okay if it is monocyte you can see kidney shaped nucleus okay this is how you see the different cells then one more question they ask from this that is you know uh, already photo micrograph it is uh, a magnified picture and the magnification is given into 
1600 here okay for example right then they will ask to draw either you know wbc or rbc okay if they ask to draw rbc then uh, you have to measure the rbc which you selected for drawing okay sometimes they will label and give for example here i will take this is the rbc selected for drawing okay then what you have to do is you have to take uh, you know the measurement okay the measurement measurement for example uh, i take the measurement like this it is you know the width or the diameter of the rbc it is around uh, you know uh, 1.2 centimeters so that i convert into millimeters which is 12 millimeters so what you have to do is you should put two lines here okay and uh, you draw a line here and uh, you can write here the width is equal to the width is equal to 12 mm 12 millimeter okay then in the same way you measure your drawing also okay there also you can put in the same way so you measure like this here also you measure like this okay right if you measure like this vertically then here also vertically you measure okay so here also i put two lines okay like this uh, you have to take the measurement of your drawing okay so i hope you understood how i measured this okay so here horizontally the diameter i measured and i wrote the width here okay width is equal to 12 mm okay it was 1.2 centimeters so it is 12 mm right and here this one also you know uh, i just draw a line in the same way how i put the line here okay on the question paper same way you have to put the line uh, on your drawing okay the same way this is horizontal so here also horizontal you have to show that in the question paper they will not ask okay but question paper you have to show how you took the measurements uh, um, from from how you took the measurement from the photo micrograph okay that is uh, the rbc how you measure that you have to show even though they did not ask okay then you have to mention also the width there so then the width of your drawing you can see and uh, here you know the width of the drawing it is nine centimeters which is around okay here also you have to label that the width the width is uh, is equal to 90 millimeters okay all this uh, measurements you have to write in millimeters or you can convert in micrometers converting millimeters into micrometers it is very easy just you can multiply this into thousand okay into thousand okay so if you are converting in micrometers you have to convert both the lengths in micrometers so then you will be asked to calculate uh, the magnification of your drawing as compared with the actual size of the specimen okay this is already magnified into uh, 1600 times already magnified the question is you know uh, you have to uh, show the magnification as compared with the actual size of the specimen so magnification equation is equal to okay uh, image size okay image size image size by actual size actual size okay so you can just uh, image size that is size of your image okay you are drawing okay that is 90 okay divide by here it is okay um, 
the size given in the question paper okay that is you know 12 okay then already it is magnified in 2600 so that also you have to consider here so 90 that is image size divided by actual size into uh, this 1600 you have to do and you will get the magnification answer application is equal to image size by actual size so uh, the size of our drawing okay that is 90 mm divide by uh, the actual size given in the question paper okay into 1600 because already it is magnified okay so you will get 1000 you will get okay 12000 so magnification when you write magnification is equal to times 12000 you have to write okay the answer times or 12000 times also is fine okay this is how you have to calculate magnification this is very important uh, you know um, because you know after giving this photo micrograph usually they ask questions like this okay so those possible questions only i discussed today right so just to remember photo micrograph of blood okay the all the components of blood we should know okay the different cells to label it and then to draw it big here you can see okay wbc wbc remember nucleus is present here you can see lobed nucleus okay ln lobed nucleus lobed nucleus okay then g granules granules okay then c cytoplasm then cell membrane cm cell membrane okay then rbc rbc only i showed okay how to draw it big label it and how to uh, you know calculate the magnification okay right so um, remember that this is how you have to draw and label blood cells and how to calculate magnification okay that's all about photo micrograph of blood and the questions related to that on the board you can see uh, a wound okay so in accidents or injury uh, when a wound is formed uh, immediately you know the bleeding stops so in this video we are going to see how the bleeding stops that is how a clot is formed right so you know that in uh, already I told in the last video uh, that blood clotting it is a vital defense mechanism for the body right so here we are going to see how the clotting take place okay right so uh, the important function of this blood clotting it is you know it minimizes blood loss okay it prevent the entry of pathogens okay it produce a framework for repair and it maintain a blood pressure to ensure proper blood circulation these are all the functions of blood clotting okay so as i told earlier blood clotting is a very important defense mechanism for our body okay now let us see how this clotting take place right so when there is a damage like we see in the board okay to a blood vessels damage you can see here damage to a blood vessels this damage exposes collagen fibers in the skin you can see here skin uh, the epidermis and the dermis part of the skin so the damage you know exposes the collagen fibers okay uh, in the skin to which you know the platelets attach the platelet then release a clotting factor called thromboplastin okay right so damaged tissues platelets are uh, a clotting factor is released called thromboplastin okay so thromboplastin with the help of calcium ions okay together uh, they convert a large soluble protein in the blood prothrombin into uh, another soluble protein 
um, called thrombin. Okay, so thromboplastin with the calcium ions convert prothrombin into thrombin. Okay, so thrombin is biologically active. Okay, so this thrombin it again catalyzes or converts uh, uh, another soluble uh, protein called fibrinogen okay in the blood into fibrin okay which is uh, insoluble okay and the fibrin it forms the mesh you can see here okay and like that a clot is formed so this is the full mechanism of clotting you can see on the board okay damaged tissues platelets thromboplastin okay thromboplastin with calcium ions convert a uh, large this uh, protein molecule prothrombin into active form thrombin okay this active protein you know soluble protein converts fibrinogen into fibrin and like that a clot is formed as i told early you know this clot it will trap you know um, I mean, uh, it will just prevent the entry of pathogens inside. Okay, right? So, you can see that here, a lot of things are happening. Okay, let me just show you some things. Okay, you see this dark, this black color, they represent bacteria which enter through the wound. And you can see this, you know, green color, white shaped structure. They are antibodies. Okay, you know, already we learned this lymphocytes, they produce antibodies. Okay, right? This antibodies, what they will do, you know, they clump the bacteria together. You can see the clumping here. Here you can see clumping. Here also you can see clumping means, you know, attaching the bacteria together. One antibody can attach, you know, two bacteria. Okay, like that, you know, uh, see, the bacteria will be, uh, you know, clumped together, all together, and so that this, you know, neutrophils, okay, right, that is, the phagocytes, they can engulf the clumped bacteria, or I can say, they can eat the clumped bacteria, all the bacteria together, okay, or they engulf, okay, the neutrophils or phagocytes engulf the clumped bacteria. Okay, so that is what happening here, you can see, right? So this is actually a past paper question, okay? So you can see how, uh, you know, the clothing take place, the mechanism of clothing and the functions of lymphocytes and phagocytes, which are, you know, WBC. WBC, you know, they have nucleus. Okay, so here you can see locked nucleus. See, some WBCs are escaping through the capillaries. Okay, capillaries. And uh, you can see antibodies are produced and, uh, you know, clumping of bacteria. And uh, you can see phagocytosis. Okay, so that's all about so this. We have seen the blood clotting mechanism. Now, you know, vitamin K is also important in the production of many of the compounds needed for the blood to clot including this prothrombin okay right so vitamin k is also important please keep it in mind okay so vitamin k is also important in the production of many of the compounds uh, needed for the blood to clot including prothrombin Okay, please keep it in mind. This is the last part in today's video. Okay, it is about the transfer of materials between capillaries and tissue fluid. Already we learned this in lymphatic system. Okay, so this is the last objective which is mentioned in the syllabus under this chapter circulatory system. Okay, so let us see. Right, so here you can see a capillary okay the arterial end of capillary they are the pressure you can see it is 30 mm of hg right so you know what happened when the blood flows due to the pressure here 
okay many things will be filtered into this spaces between the cells and what is uh, you know filtered and reaching this uh, you know between the cells we call it as the tissue fluid we learned already plasma leaks out okay and uh, you know we can see the cells they are bathed in tissue fluid so oxygen food these things you know uh, it will be coming out okay with the plasma and from this tissue fluid they will be uh, diffused into the cells and the waste will be diffused out into this tissue fluid okay and uh, you know I already told 90 percentage of the fluid that leaks from the capillaries uh, it will be eventually sweeps back okay into them so you can see here uh, uh, you know from the uh, blood the plasma leaks out okay and 90 percentage it seeps back you can see reabsorption and the carbon dioxide that uh, is coming out from the cells after respiration okay this carbon dioxide also will be you know uh, used into capillaries okay so like that 90 percentage of the fluid that leaks out from the uh, capillaries it will be just reabsorbed the remaining 10 percentage is collected up by the lymph vessels lymphatics or you can see a lymph capillary here okay they will collect the remaining 10 percentage okay and it will be returned back to the blood system we have learned in lymphatic system okay it will be uh, you know uh, along with the, uh, this uh, um, limb uh, you know limb you know we have already learned that okay so this tissue fluid it will be the remaining 10 percentage it is drained through this lymph vessels and we call it as limb and uh, they will reach the blood circulatory system finally okay so this is how materials are transferred between capillaries and tissue fluid okay so you can see this so that's all about our class for today and uh, in this class we learned three things okay the first thing is the photo micrograph of blood there we learned about uh, you know the cells okay how to uh, draw you know the different blood cells and label it how to calculate magnification okay right the second we learned about a wound how the wound is healed blood clotting mechanism okay and I told you the functions of uh, you know lymphocytes and phagocytes so this is all about today's lesson hope you enjoyed today's lesson and with this you know we have completed the circulatory system which is one of the uh, most important chapter for your Cambridge uh, O-level examination so hope you understood this next I will be starting with another system okay uh, so please you know watch my videos uh, and uh, please subscribe